All right, welcome. I suggest we get started. I know it's lunchtime, a very difficult time for most people to make it, but I'm happy you're here. And today I'd like to share ideas and uh, some vision for an alliance and a few insights on enterprise marketing. So let's get us started. A few words about me. Since 2007, 8 I've been in Drupal space and most people know me for organizing events like the Drupal Government Days in Brussels, like Drupal Business Days, CXO events around Europe, and also supporting Drupal Bulgaria. But what many people don't know is that I'm also responsible for some of the largest Drupal implementations and uh, I've been in different roles like uh, also presenting and selling Drupal and probably the lar some of the largest cases today that we have in Drupal um, I've participated in, in bringing Drupal to these companies. And that's from where I'd like to share a few points. First off, the old marketing playbook, I think it's broken. So today when we do marketing, we may do newsletters and different uh, activities like which most of them don't work anymore. And the way buying happens has changed. Nowadays, it's not us choosing the customers, the customers are choosing us. We are transparent in providing information. When you look up our websites, we publish, we present ourselves at conferences, and give customers insights on, uh, on which they can choose us as a vendor. It is becoming more and more about the right content at the right time to the right person, the right place. Everyone is talking about it. Everyone is talking about personalization. So some of the largest companies which are in our industry are very good at personalization. They even offer it to their clients. So this kind of outweighs the Drupal industry and overall. Can anyone name a few competitors to the Drupal space? Adobe, Sitecore. That was already pretty good. Okay, I'm pressing next. It's kind of surprising me. Okay. All right. You mentioned two companies, and only these two companies have an ecosystem which accounts for a revenue that goes up to 15 billions a year. Only the software licenses of Adobe come around to 1.5 billions every year. Any guess how big the Drupal industry might be right now? We're probably somewhere there, maybe a bit more. So this is kind of way bigger than we are right now. So 500 millions was the guess of Chandeep. So we as a business understood that we need to get a market intelligence 
And we need to understand where is this industry going and how do we fit in it. So uh, just a few weeks ago, we've been at uh, DMX Co and we thought we are pretty big already, but uh, yeah, it turns out we are quite small. I mean, our company, for example, has around 150 employees. So we need to know what are competitors talking about. We need to know what is happening in our industry and what are people saying about Drupal? Who are the biggest influencers that can help us to move forward? And to get a better understanding of whom we are selling to and where Drupal is moving, we first need to understand who are the personas and the stakeholders in our industry. Who are our buyers? So when we talk about our buyers, and these are people which I have meetings on a regular basis with, they're usually people and managers at high level. They usually don't spend their own money. They need to be convinced. And what is very surprising to many, they want a feature list. Of course they want solutions, but they still want a feature list. And they're looking for the total cost of ownership. How much will the whole thing cost? And we're not just talking about development. And I'll get to the total cost of ownership in a moment. Usually these are mul multiple decision makers. And one point which we notice more and more, budgets are moving away from the IT department. They're moving more into marketing, they're moving more into the line of business where decisions are taken also for the IT. When our buyers decide, in most cases, they look what are competitors doing. They look at our competitors. They look for reference. They look what is the industry standard. What are the leading companies doing there? I've mentioned total cost of ownership. While this is a very common picture, it is even not the complete picture. How many of you have calculated the total cost of ownership for a larger project? Okay, I see one, a, half, a half hand, okay? So, uh, is there anything that is missing here when we are calculating the total cost of ownership? Anyone? Well, something which is clearly missing is the cost of transformation. Because when we are selling solutions today, it is a transformation which companies have to do. And this cost is clearly hard to calculate. So it is a business number, a number which is very relevant to every business we are talking to. How much will the solution cost, including the transformation which the customer has to do? And these are the kind of numbers which our customers are looking at. When you do marketing, I guess I'm not showing you anything new here. Anyone can tell me, like in his, or, or maybe I'd like to know who is doing marketing here in, in the room, or who is dealing with marketing. Obviously, okay. So there are many different options when we want to do marketing for our company or for Drupal. And when we look at the tactics for marketing, it might be not that well visible, but most companies say, according to an American study, that they use social media, 92%. 
83% say they use newsletters, articles on websites, blogs, and then we have further down in-person events, case studies, videos, and so on. When we ask what are the most effective ones, most B2B companies say in-person events are the most effective ones. Who of you has been this year to some major digital conference with a booth like Mexico, for example, which is an in-person event where we've met many large customers. Who is doing webinars and webcasts? Okay, I see two hands. Case studies and white papers? Still not that many, but a few more. So what is stopping us of, of doing this? Anyone? Time. Time? Okay. That's a very valid point. Because we all are very busy in our day-to-day -day business. Any other? Money. Money, resources, budget, right? So how can we actually get there to compete with large companies? How can we get there as an industry in which we are companies from maybe 15 to 100 and something, which is way smaller than our, or let's say some of our major competitors? One of the ways which a few companies around the world, and this discussion is going for me since 2010, where we had the first CXO event, was that we need to connect. We need to connect, ask the right, right questions, and share between each other what the ways are, and share resources in order to achieve a common goal. This is a picture of the Drupal Business Days, where we started recently to outline what can be done. So one of the proposed solutions in Frankfurt was to form an alliance of Drupal companies where every company connects with the others to find and look for the big picture and to achieve it together. A collaborative environment which, beyond competition, tackles all the meta-level activities which we are missing out and every company by itself cannot provide. It is an alliance which wants to organize Drupal marketing on a global scale. When I, as a company, do marketing, with limited time and limited resources, I will have limited reach. But if I put this together in an alliance of hundreds of companies around the world, we can have a much broader reach. So when we are talking about marketing, and every marketeer will tell us this, I guess, that we need to analyze and measure consistently, right? Well, we don't have enough time, we don't have enough money. So we need to find a way to do it together and to hire the people who know about this best. So we need experts who can help and who remain focused because I'm doing events every year. 
and for three months I'm full in and then I'm burned out. I need just to focus on my business because otherwise we'll run out of business. So this is not very consistent. When we start as an alliance, we need to understand who is our customer. And I've said a few things about it, but we need also to understand on a broader level what is his journey, what are his decision-making key points. How can we reach them and deliver the content at the right time? I'd like to show, because there are many ideas coming together from these companies which basically want to crowdsource these materials and I'd like to show one of one example video where I think we should go into into that direction and some familiar faces nice so you probably some of you have been there at uh, Tom Erickson's presentation I'd just like to show the video that Acre created. Um, this is a, a, a slide that we're going to be able to share, sorry, a video, share with everybody and give back to the Drupal community. So an example of giving back. And just listen to this and then we'll see how you feel after this uh, video. Think for a moment of the brands and companies shaped by Drupal. The power brands. The makers, the institutions, the cultural icons that unite us, the ones that make us sing, carry us away. The Agile, the Resilient, and the ones who support them, the developers, the millions across the globe, the marketers, the front line behind the glass, the road warriors, the people out in the wild, fighting every day. The agencies. The masters of strategy and emotion. So what do all these people have in common? The digital platform that powers some of the most exciting experiences on the web. Drupal. A little bit, it's not... Uh... So while this is a good start in the right direction, which shows the magnitude of Drupal, we need to create more business-focused videos, materials, buyer's guides. There are plenty of ideas which companies are providing at the moment. For example, we've started with an RFP process for hiring an independent agency. We started preparing the RFP to hire an external agency, which will help us to create a large-scale campaign consisting of videos and industry materials, which then in sprints will be personalized to different countries. And when we're talking about personalization, we'd want to go even a step further where every company which is part of the alliance in the first place can personalize materials for themselves.
at the moment there are around 40 companies around the globe. On Monday it was around 30. And the goal is to reach 100 companies somewhere around DrupalCon Nashville. with the goal to unite and offer enterprise marketing on a global scale. I've prepared a few backup slides because I thought you might have a few questions. So I left also a bit of time for questions. Anyone would like to ask first? Well, that, that is a good question because uh, we are most likely or very likely competing companies. The point is, it is better to compete in a larger pie between us, enabling both of us to participate in that larger pie than both of us being anyway in the small pie where we still compete with each, with each other. And that's the goal. We, we can reach more by being together. So the question was, what would be the typical size of a company which may, where it may make sense to participate? So we were thinking, and these are the companies which are currently discussing it, that typically around 15 to more than 100 companies may participate, more than 100 uh, employees may participate. It is not just about the size. There are companies which are just a few people, but have, like, uh, let's say, a, a product, I mean, yeah, there are different setups. It may depend on the company, the industry, and so on, but that's the average, I guess. Yes, that is uh, exactly one point which is very important for most of the companies. And that is, I will show a working model, that in the first place, every company has one vote, regardless of the size, so that we have a, a global spread and not one or two companies like ruling the industry. Because that we already have. We have one or two companies which are basically pushing the boundaries. And that's good. And we should follow as companies together. So I put forward to another slide, the working model, which you've asked for. Basically, full members and supporting members contribute towards an idea pool and a voting platform. Ideas are voted up and then delivered to a board which shall be consisting of uh, local chapters around the world. And um, once every cycle, there will be three ideas taken out of the pool, which are evaluated for feasibility and then pushed for voting. And one of these three ideas has to win for execution. Then this is handed over to hired experts which basically have to pitch through an RFP process for, for this specific project which has been chosen. And the first 
to benefit are the companies participating. And after a certain time, the materials will be published to the public so that the whole Drupal community can, can yeah, use the materials. Other questions? That is a very good question, which I got quite often. Yes, we are in connection with the Drupal Association. The main goal is not to do the same things which the Drupal Association is already doing, but to build on top of what the Drupal Association is doing. The Drupal Association has a lot of data, and we can use this data to bring it further in, in accordance to what our business needs are. So we are aiming for a close collaboration with the Drupal Association so that we can make use of the data which is already existing and the initiatives. That is, yeah, exactly, that's one of the key points that we are close to the customers and we, we can directly influence on, on the activities which we're doing without having to go through other governance which is maybe not that close to the customers. If we have a plan to foster collaboration between agencies inside the Alliance, there, is, there are ideas where in a vendor network agencies might collaborate on, on inquiries from, for, of uh, clients. This is at an idea stage and has to be decided by the business community, but there is, there is some agencies which are very interested in this. They are. Right, so the input basically was that other industries are doing very similar things successfully, which allows them together to pitch to larger customers and win larger cases. And this would be one of uh, the strengths together with all the marketing activities for the alliance. And there is one idea, for example, which, uh, for example, could be group insurance, for example, for... Um, which might help in, in cases where you pitch to larger customers as a consortium to have a group insurance, basically. Any other questions? Financially, the idea is that every company has a share in the alliance. Basically, like every company has one vote, every company pays or shares uh, a fair bit of it. And how do you think it would be to give the, the voters that the, a voter that takes into account the kind of benefit proportion of participating in some of the uh, alliances? How do you want to distribute the votes? Do you want to have some kind of There is no profit for the organization itself because uh, 
the organization is not basically leading the, the delivery of the project. It is the companies within the organization. So the organization is supporting with, with activities which help companies to achieve it, basically. So the profit is, not, is going to the companies which win the deals, basically, directly. So, and, yeah, basically, the, there is no profit orientation for this organization, except the one for the companies. Okay, with profit, you were aiming at benefits, basically. basically. Yeah, That's uh, okay. For a company, it would not make a sense. For example, a company based in Frankfurt, where you get a lot of uh, cost of funds, and a company based in, like, Eastern Europe, for example. All right. And it's, it's just a little different. So the, the, the primary goal is a global perspective. Then broken down to local chapters, where local chapters can use the global materials to localize them for their needs. So we never will achieve an equal distribution because this is the way the market moves. So for example, if we now have a downwards going market in the UK and upwards going market uh, in Germany, this, this is might be influenced through our marketing, but this is also market volatility which we cannot influence. So the primary goal will be to have a global perspective because on the local level, you might do already marketing activities which are effective, but this global scale, which we can achieve only together, this is the primary focus. It's going to be a non-profit, exactly. All right. Okay, thanks. Any other questions? Well, then, yeah, one more question. Right. The main next steps will be focusing on outreach, basically connecting more companies and getting them on board. That's the main steps. We are considering some sprints in between where companies come together and discuss the framework, but the main steps will be outreach because only if we have this critical mass, only then we can be successful. Okay, then thank you very much for your attention.